poet, lover, bird watcher. Or you can say poet, lover, bird watcher. This is what we're going to come to know in today's capsule summary. Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walad. Today's very beautiful poem, a very serious and a philosophical poem of discussion under Indian literature, which is a part of UPHEC syllabus and of course, few other syllabi of colleges and universities across India. This poem is by Nizam Izikil, poet, lover, bird watcher. Okay. Now, this was published in the year 1965 in Nizam's third volume of poems, which was called The Exact Name. Poet, of course, Nizam Izikil, as I told you, he lived from 1924 to 2004. Style of this poem is it's a philosophical poem. And yes, it is an Ars Poetica. It will tell us about, you know, the art of writing. You'll come to know. Theme is patience. Very important theme is patience. How patience works. How if you want to act, you must be patient. That is what is going to be the primary theme of this poem. And the other theme is creation of art. Tone is serious. It is one of those Nizim's serious poems. This poem has only two stanzas. Each stanza has 10 lines, okay? So first stanza is here to your left. First, I'm going to read all the 10 lines and then we will begin with the explanation. Let's start. To force the pace and never to be still is not the way of those who study birds or women. The best poets wait for words. The hunt is not an exercise of will, but patient love relaxing on a hill to note the movement of a timid wing until the one who knows that she is loved no longer waits but risks surrendering in this the poet finds his moral proved who never spoke before his spirit moved here the speaker is actually addressing the poet so the speaker says that dear poets Showing haste or hyperactivity is not the way, followed by bird watchers or lovers. Basically, he is trying to compare bird watchers and lovers, and then he wants that a poet should exactly become similar or synonymous to bird watchers and lovers. So the speaker says that, dear poets, if you show the force of pace or haste, if you're never still, that is, you're hyperactive. That is not the way which is followed by bird watchers or lovers. And bird watchers and lovers are very ideal. They are awesome. Similarly, you too, poets, you too must learn to wait. Wait for what? What should the poets wait for? Wait for the idea. Wait for the right words to flow to your heart. That's exactly what Nizim means. Wait for the right words. Wait for that spontaneity to come. Do not just write for the heck of writing that you are a poet, you are a writer because you have to write poems or you have to create art. You will write anything. No, wait. Theme, patience. Then the speaker says, watching birds or wooing a woman. These are hunts. Watching a bird or wooing a woman. That is hunts. This is not easy. Why? A bird watcher must Patiently wait with love, patience and love together. So a bird watcher must patiently with love wait on top of the hill only to notice one movement of that shy bird's wing. The bird watcher is sitting and sitting for hours together, but the bird is not moving its wing. So the bird watcher is patiently sitting at the top of the hill and also showing a lot of love. That is, he's not impatient. He's not angry. He's quiet, happy, and satisfied that his bird watching is going on. It's progressing. Next, the speaker says that only through patience, a woman surrenders, risks surrendering. Okay. So this proves that a poet should also not write until his soul stirs or a muse inspires him. See, in this, the poet finds his moral proved. That is, it is proved. 
who never spoke before his spirit moved. Do not speak, do not write anything before your soul stirs or your muse inspires you or your psyche has that inspiration. Here the theme is poetic inspiration. Yes, with this, the first stanza is done. Let's move to the second stanza. Let's read all the 10 lines first. The slow movement seems somehow to say much more. To watch the rarer birds, you have to go along deserted lanes and where the rivers flow in silence near the source or by a shore remote and thorny like the heart's dark floor. And there the women slowly turn around, not only flesh and bone, but myths of light with darkness at the core. And sense is found, but poets lost in crooked, restless flight, the deaf can hear, the blinds recover sight. Oh, what a poem, huh? It is actually a dictatorial poem. Nizam says, do this if you want to be a good poet. So in this stanza, what does the speaker say? He says that it is the deliberate slow pace that produces reward for the bird watcher, the lover and the poet. The slow movement says much more. That is, it is the deliberate slow pace which will produce rewards, which will give you success. Who are the bird watcher, the lover and the poet? Do you observe the birds of rarest kind? You must travel along remote lanes, remote roads, or to the headwaters. Headwaters is basically the source of the river from where the river begins. That is called the headwaters, okay? It usually is elevated. So the poet says that, you know, if you want to observe those birds of rarest kinds, rarest species, you must travel along remote roads, that is deserted lanes, or to headwaters, where the rivers flow in silence. They've just come out from their source. They are flowing in silence. Or you have to move along a deserted and a thorny shore, just like, you know, the speaker compares these shores to the deepest secrets of the heart. Now here, you should compare it like this, I'll tell you. You know, bird watching, I have written it. I have written it here. The bird in this poem actually symbolizes the quest for self-knowledge, which is restless and rare. The female image in this poem symbolizes a fertile creative impulse. Literally, when Nizim says bird watching or, you know, loving, he's actually connecting everything to writing. So the bird symbolizes quest for self-knowledge. Female symbolizes that fertile creative impulse. Understood? Yes? Let's move back. So we were here that to do all this, you have to go along the deserted and thorny shores, which are like the deepest secrets of the heart. And only after being so patient on such a deserted journey, the woman finally agrees to return the man's love. That is, she slowly turns around. When a woman turns around to look at the man, Remember uh, those stories, those films where the boy says, Palat, Palat, Palat. If she loves me, she's going to turn around. That's exactly what Nizim means. So when the lover is ready to be patient and undertake that deserted journey, the woman will actually Palat. The woman is going to slowly turn around and it will not just be her body, not just be her flesh and bone which will turn. It will actually be the myth of light, that is her happiness with darkness at the core. That is psychologically also, with all the deepness in her heart, with all the secrets of her heart, she's going to turn. Yes? Next lines. Similarly, now Nizim tries to, what should I say? Amalgamate everything. He brings bird watching, lovers wooing a woman, and poem writing together. So Nizim says that only when a poet runs wild with imaginations, poets lost in crooked, restless flight. Crooked is like not straight, you know, topsy-turvy. So when a poet is ready to run wild with imaginations, only then things will start making sense. Only then his created words or poems or piece of art will have a tremendous impact 
such kind of impact that the deaf can hear and the blind recover sight. The deaf will be able to see with his words and the blind, sorry, the, the deaf will be able to hear with his words and the blind will be able to see with the power of his words. Here the theme is power of art. So if I want to summarize this poem, I'll say that a poet must travel to the unknown lanes of his psyche. Now for once, forget bird watching, forget lovers, okay? Forget the female image. Actually, Nizim means a poet must travel to the unknown lanes of his psyche and also conjure the poetic muses, you know, the inspiration from the flowing river of his consciousness, deep consciousness. And also patience is required if he wants to create an art. Patience is the best action to achieve the goal for any poet. Yes, he or she, of course. Nice, na? Achieve. Says a lot in few words. Poetic devices, simile, like is used here. Remote and thorny, like the heart's dark floor. Personification is the poet or the best poets wait for words. They wait for words. So the words are coming to them. His spirit moved. Next, exercise of will. Next, patient love. Even this is, you know, a personification. It can also be a transferred epithet. Then timid wing. Yes. Alliteration, repetition of sounds. Never spoke before his spirit moved. And next example of alliteration, slow movement seems somehow to say much more. Yeah. Critical analysis of this poem, form and structure. 20 lines are there total, which are divided into two stanzas of 10 lines each. And rhyme scheme of this poem is A, B, B, A, A, C, D, C, D, D. Okay. A, B, B, A, A, C, D, C, D, D. Few points to ponder. This poem, that is Poet, Lover, Bird Watcher, is actually somewhat similar to the poem, the Elizabethan poem, called The Lunatic, The Lover and the Poet, which was extracted from a Midsummer's Night Dream, Shakespeare's play. Next, Nisim Izikil was the recipient of Sahitya Academy Award in the year 1983. Next point to ponder. Bird watching and winning the love of a woman require a deliberately slow pace and observation. Next, as I told you, this poem can be classified as an ars poetica because it is essentially about writing poems or creating a piece of art. And last point to ponder, the bird, I, I, I want to repeat this line again, I told you before, the bird in this poem symbolizes the quest for self-knowledge. This quest is restless and rare. And the female image in this poem symbolizes a fertile, creative impulse. Did you like it? Short and sweet and very, very meaningful. Yes. All Nizim means is concentrate, consistent. Even if you want to pass an exam, take it for yourself. Do it. Be patient. Concentrate. Don't just do anything for the heck of it. Think before doing. Think before speaking. Actually, you can connect it to all this. Yes. This is Hina from Team Walla. Take very good care of yourself. And of course, you have to comment down if you like today's poem. Share it with your friends and relatives. Subscribe to our channel, Walad by Dr. Kalyani Walad. And if you're preparing for any exam related to English literature, let it be NET, SET, CUET, GATE, all other exams where English literature as a syllabi is there, you can contact us. 938783987 is our phone number. And our classes by Dr. Kalyani Walat are lovely, full of knowledge, and they are they're awesome. You should take them someday. Bye-bye. Take care of yourself.